Let's continue our team coverage now with NBC 10's Eli Rosenberg, who's talking to voters here, and he's live in Melrose inside one of the polling locations. Eli. JC, so far so good here in Melrose. In fact, come here, look at this. This is the scene here inside a gymnasium at a middle school. A little different here in Melrose in that this is the only place to vote. We have seen a steady stream of people all afternoon now into the evening. Bad weather outside is not slowing down voter turnout. In Melrose, democracy in action. Voters turning out on this primary day. Got to get my two cents worth in. And it was that two cents and that civic duty that voters say drew them out on a rainy, cool Tuesday. Oh, it's so important to vote, especially with today's issues, everything that's going on. Primary days not known for massive turnouts. About 3,000 people in Melrose voted early, too. But here, where everyone votes at the same spot, the middle school, a steady flow of voters. All this with no major issues. Having it in one location enables us to address any concerns right at the moment. And of course, with November's election day fast approaching, all this an important test for a presidential election where larger crowds will be expected. I think every election we learn something and learn how to do it um, better. And for these three, this primary day, their first time ever voting. I think it's important to learn about like politics in the United States and everything like that. I mean, it was exciting to be part of like the community and, and getting engaged and stuff like that. Well, you have a voice, so you should might as well use it. And voters tell us no issues either, from finding their precincts to picking up their ballots to voting to casting those ballots. Voters in and out in no time at all. Well, if you didn't do anything about it, you have no, you can't complain. I don't want to do that. I want to make sure, at least if I'm complaining <laughs> about something, I at least tried. Isn't it a great mix? We have some first time voters. We've had people voting for years. The plan right now is this is going to be open till eight. People can come here to the middle school and vote till eight. They can also drop off their ballots at City Hall here in Melrose until eight o'clock as well. Then all the ballots are going to be brought to the middle school here. This is where they're going to be tabulated. City clerk says she hopes to have results by 9 o'clock tonight. I've been Melrose, Eli Rosenberg, NBC 10 Boston. All right, Eli, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and bring in my ad issue co-host, my primary pal, my caucus confidant, <laughs> Sue O'Connell. She's live in the newsroom for us. <clears throat> Sue, we'll start with an easy one. Any surprising predictions, wild predictions tonight? Well, Corey, go big or go home. I'm predicting uh, Haley's going to do much, much better than the polling in Massachusetts has been indicating. Remember, we're a winner-take-all contest with the 40 delegates going to any candidate that breaks the 50% mark. Could that happen for Haley? We, I don't know. We'll find out, right? And she may win a state or two along the way, one of them being Vermont with their 17 allocated delegates. And Haley could win in Virginia if all that magic happens for her. It's still a steep and nearly impossible climb for her to get to that magic number of 1,215 delegates to earn the nomination. But let's see what happens. That's why we hold elections and football games, right? Very true. All right. If you're running President Biden's reelection campaign, you're likely not worried about anything tonight. But winning may not sort of calm all the concerns surrounding mm -hmm. the campaign. What are they going to be looking for tonight in terms of any potential danger signs moving forward? Yeah, as usual, turnout and enthusiasm. We'll have exit polls telling us what voters are thinking. Those are usual concerns. But in this particular primary election, paying attention to the anger that Democrats may express over the Gaza war by voting uncommitted or no preference in states where they can instead of choosing Joe Biden. Now, we won't need exit polling to tell us how important the Gaza war is or isn't to these voters. November is too far away to say if those voters are rejecting Biden for good, so we'll see what happens there. And then North Carolina. I think it's the only swing state voting today. Biden lost in 2020 to Trump by less than two percentage points. Obviously, this is a primary and Biden and Trump are not competing head to head, but it could be a good peak for the Biden campaign to see how they might do in the general election. And to see what issues are driving those voters mm -hmm. to the polls on the Super Tuesday. All right, last one. Let's talk about Arizona. Big announcement today. Senator Kirsten Sinema says she is not going to seek re-election. 
Democrats have a narrow majority in the Senate, as is. How do you think this news is going over with them? She had some fans and she had some detractors in the party. She did indeed, but it was unlikely that Cinema, who started her political career as a Green Party organizer, by the way, it was unlikely she was actually going to win re-election. There's already a Democrat who's been in the primary race, Ruben Gallego. So Cinema's decision to drop out makes things a bit simpler for the Democrats and, and for the Republicans as well. But if you have friends or family in Arizona, Prepare them for a season of wall-to-wall -wall political ads until November 7th, because the Senate race is going to be an expensive one, and Arizona is a purple state, so lots of ads and money being poured in there. So buckle up. All right, Sue, so go get some coffee and save us some pizza, please. Got, oh, we know it's going to be a long I gotta night. Save you pizza? Yeah, you're, you're in the newsroom. Go get it. Okay. Thanks, Sue. We appreciate it. And we're going to have special extended coverage for Super Tuesday. As the results come in tonight, that includes an hour-long 7 o'clock newscast with JC and I. We'll also have coverage from 8 to 10 p.m. Just search Boston News under the Live tab on your favorite streaming services.